located at 4315 South on Wabash Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. This church of radio broadcast ministry was founded by the Reverend Clarence H. Cobbs, and our pastor is Reverend James R. Bryson Jr. He graciously awaits your communications via email at office at fcdchicago.org or via mail P.O. Box 53601, Chicago, Illinois 606. Five, three. Or you may call the church office at 773-373-7700. This service is recorded live at the 11 a.m. hour during our morning worship service and aired via radio station WVON 1690 on your a.m. dial at the 11 p.m. hour. This is the religious, this religious experience is dedicated to the sick and the shut-in, to the bereaved, to those who are incarcerated, and to those who truly love the Lord, and especially those seeking a relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Your radio announcer for this hour is yours truly, Sarah Amuzu. joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Be thankful unto him. Be thankful unto him. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Hallelujah.
want you to remain standing for our congregational hymn, The Palms. choir opens our music ministry with Ride On King Jesus.
continuing our music ministry, we have he has done great things for me. for Sunday, March 24th. 
Won't you join us on Friday, March 29th for our Good Friday service here in the main sanctuary at 7 p.m. Music ministry by the adult choir featuring the seven last words of Christ presented by our ministers. Mark your calendars for Friday, May 31st at 6 o'clock for our church's 95th anniversary banquet dinner held at the Chateau Del Mar, 8301 West 95th Street, Hickory Hills, Illinois, 60457. You can reach out to um, Mr. Quixie or Dr. Anna Chambers, um, chairperson and co-chairpersons for any questions. Uh, March 30th, 30th, Evangelist Kenny and the EFC Committee, in cooperation with the First Church of Deliverance, will distribute purses from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the community center. We look forward to seeing you there. This concludes your announcements for Sunday, March 24th. And the choir returns with Highway to Heaven. <laughs>
during the month of May. We will celebrate each Wednesday night right here in this main sanctuary. 95 years of continuous ministry. We've invited some of our local friends to come and worship with us. Please plan to attend each Wednesday night in the month of May. in Chicago, Illinois, or viewing through Facebook Live at fcdchicago.org or through Comcast Cable Channel 25. This is the First Church of Deliverance, the spiritual church of love and faith. We are located at 4315 South on Wabash Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. This church and radio broadcast ministry was founded by the Reverend Clarence H. Cobb. And our pastor is Reverend James R. Bryson, Jr. If you have been spiritually uplifted by this worship experience, email us at office at fcdchicago.org. And now the next speaking voice that you will hear is of our beloved pastor and your radio minister, Reverend James R. Bryson, Jr. is the light of the world. God bless you, my family. I'm glad once again to have this privilege to share this broadcast hour with you. To tell you there's no other name given under the heavens whereby men and women can be saved other than the name of Jesus. And to tell you that I love you, you and even you. And it makes no difference what you think of me, but it does make a difference what I think of you. For I cannot allow hate, prejudice, and all the things that separate men and women from God keep me from knowing. And because I know, I want you to know as I know that Jesus is the light of the world. Give him praise this morning. Come on, let's give him praise. Yeah.
Come on, let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Isn't that why we came today? Whom shall I fear? He's ever shining in my soul. God this morning. They that walked in darkness have seen a great light. And if you can testify to that, why don't you put your hands together one more time? Thank you, God, for the light. Oh, yes. He is the light of the world. I'm telling you, if you don't get joy watching how Beverly directs that song, and you can just see it coming all out of her, the anointing. And when you let go and let God, the anointing destroys the yoke and when you get in touch with the anointing you're free there's no more chains binding you you're free we thank God for each one of you that are in this room today and we thank God for each one of you that are tuned in to us via our various means of communication modes of communication and we want to thank you for helping us to keep these broadcasts on the air. For these broadcasts are kept on the air by faith. We have no other sponsor but the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you enjoy this broadcast, this telecast, send us a contribution this week. Help us to know that we're being a help to you. And you help us to keep these services on the air. We thank God for our choir. What a powerful music ministry this morning they rendered. We're lifting up all of our bereaved families. We're lifting up Sister Marcella Thomas in the transition of her sister Deborah. And then maybe some of you knew and some of you did not know, but our trustee Janice Brown made her transition service we're already held. We're lifting up everyone on our sick and shut in list especially Reverend Keith Adams, Sister Roberta, Roberta Della, Sister Artricia Trimble, uh, Trustee Mikey Samuel, who had surgery this week. For all of you, Deborah Byes, Denise Johnson, and Derek, and happy to see Sister Dolores Hammond with us here today. And I'm looking in the back, I'm seeing that miracle that I call missionary Edna Humphreys. Thank God. What the devil meant for evil, God turned it around. And I'm here to tell you that whatever your situation that you're going through, it may look like it's dark, but I'm telling you, God specializes in things that seem impossible. He could do what no other power can do. 
We're thanking God right now. You ought to give God praise for the healing power that is still yet flowing in this very room. Thank you, Jesus. We're lifting up Mother Collins. We're lifting up Felicia Caldwell, Jerry Chapman, Joan Doherty, Loretta Sweets Hines, Lorena Nellum, Nellum, I'm sorry, Marilyn Collins. We're lifting up continually Trustee Maurice Johnson, and I mentioned our sister, uh, Trustee um, Mikey Samuels as well. Roberta Dellar, we're praying and lifting you up, Roberta. I know you're watching. Scotty Hubbs, Sydney Parker. We're lifting up Thelma Walker, Theodore Love, Mother Theodore Love and Mother Veronica James, Brother Wesley Townsley. I'm calling these names because when they watch, I want them to know that we still are thinking about them. Even though they may not be able to be here today, we're still lifting you up in prayer. And we know that prayer can fix it every time. It will. It will. Prayer will fix it every time. Wileen McCray, Willie B. Rich, and Willie Stinson, if your name didn't make it to the list, just know that God knows what you're going through and what you're experiencing. And this broadcast was always about giving hope and encouragement. I want to thank all of you that are here today. I'm so glad to see the Peyton family that has come back to the church this Sunday morning. Stand up, let them know who you are. Amen. We're so glad to have you back home. Amen. Amen. My soul rejoiced when Reverend Gore looked out the window and saw you coming walking down the street. I said, well, that's a surprise, and I'm so grateful. Thank you for being here today. Do we have visitors in the house? And if you're here today, won't you stand? Ushers, would you please be prepared to give them a visitor's card? We just want to recognize your presence with us today. If you're visiting in the house today, there's my buddy back there. Amen. Thank you for coming. Ushers will give you a visitor's card. That means the rest are family. It's good to see the family here today. And we are family. Up or down, sink or swim, survive or perish, you better learn how to hold on to God's unchanging hand no matter what's going on. And one thing I do know is that you cannot divorce your family. You may want to sometimes, but you cannot. Because we operate in a spirit of love here at First Church of Deliverance. We love each other, and we're just grateful to see you. Juan, good to see you here back again. Amen. And my brother right there, good to see you as well. Thank you, Juan, for making sure he got here today. We have, he hasn't been able to come because of transportation. All right. Well, today is Palm Sunday, and we're celebrating the triumphal entry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we give you this message today, I want you to realize, and Kimani, I'm glad to see you here today as well. God bless you, sweetie. Amen. If you would, just read with me from the book of Luke. It's listed in your bulletin this morning as the scripture for the week. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anybody asks you why are you untying it, say the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the coat, its owners asked them, why are you untying the coat? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. Another translation says cloaks and palms, and laid it 
so that Jesus, as he came into the city, would be traveling on top of those items. Today I want to talk to you from the subject of the Lord has need of thee. The Lord has need of thee. Please pray with me today. Eternal God, at this preaching moment, we open our mouths and we say thank you. For if it had not been for you on our side, our enemies would have devoured us. All the plans that the devil had to mess us up, God, you stepped in and you blocked it. And we say thank you for that. Oh God, we know we haven't done all that we should do. And some things we have done that we should not have done. But oh, you are such a loving and forgiving God. And so, God, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. Create within us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. Oh, my God, today, we thank you for your word. I pray that your anointing will go forth with power today. That you will open up the hearts of those that will receive it. Allow these seeds of faith to take root and grow so that their latter will be better than their before. That they will grow in grace, that they will grow in love, this being our strength and our power. We thank you, O oh God. Now, O oh God, we know that you know every concern in this room today. Fix it. Fix it. Fix that hard heart. Fix that mean spirit. Renew a sense of love and togetherness and fellowship in our midst. Only you can do it. I said only you can do it. You can soften hearts. You can let love abide. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Many years ago before, long before, I accepted the call into the ministry. Long before I was ordained, certainly long before I became pastor of First Church of Deliverance, a very seasoned minister spotted me out in a crowd and he came to me and spoke the words the Lord has need of thee I knew the words were in the Bible somewhere I did not know where but here they are in the triumphant entry story which is found in Matthew Mark and Luke a version of it is also in John Matthew says it like this Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anybody says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. The Lord has need of thee. The Lord has need of me. Now, how does that even make sense? We're used to hearing that we need the Lord. But here, the story is telling us that not only do we need the Lord, but the Lord needs us. In this human realm, the only hands God has is our hands. The only feet he has are our feet. The only mouth that he has is our mouth. The only ears that he has are our ears. And you, as well as myself, sometimes feel that we're not worthy enough of Christ and that we may not have much to give. But Christ can take the most ordinary thing and shape it into a tool for the advancement of his kingdom. How do I know this? Because in the Bible it tells me that Jesus asked to use the boat of some fishermen. And that simple boat became a pulpit to preach to the masses. How do I know that Jesus has need of us? 
Because with a small boy's lunch of bread and fish, Jesus was able to feed more than 5,000 men alone, along with women and children. How do I know that the Lord has need of thee? Of thee is because with a little dirt from the ground, he was able to heal a blind man. How do I know he has need of thee? Because the borrowed tomb of Joseph of Arimathea became the empty tomb that would prove Christ's res resurrection. In truth, Jesus really doesn't need what we have in the sense that he cannot exist without that something. Rather, he chooses, somebody say chooses, to work alongside his creatures, using them for his glory. We're approaching 95 years here at First Church Deliverance. Can we give God praise for that? Amen. He used a little teenage boy named Clarence Henry Cobbs and told him to go build a church and name it the First Church of Deliverance. Here, 95 years later, we still stand in. Oh, yes. Little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. In Jesus' time, a donkey was a valuable possession for the ordinary middle-class family. On the day of his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus instructed his disciples to head into the city, untie a colt from its post outside a certain house, and then bring it to Jesus for his use. The only explanation that the disciples were to give the owner is that the Lord had need of it. Many folks, much like the untied donkey in Matthew's gospel and in Luke's gospel and in Mark's gospel and in John's gospel, they feel like they have come to a fork in the road. They've come to the point where they may see five doors in front of them, not knowing which one God wants you to walk through. This particular dilemma is not specific to a particular age group, for it pertains to people from the very young to the very old. It's not specific to race, gender, or creed. Everyone from young to old, poor to rich, black or white, experiences the need to know what their true purpose in life is. The Lord has need of thee. No matter what you do, it ought to be primary in your focus that whatever you do, it should be being done unto the glory of God. Now let me just park right here for just a second. If you're doing something and God is not getting the glory out of it, you need to check that. If your conversation is not bringing glory to God, you need to check that. If your behavior is not bringing glory to God, you need to check it. People are watching you, people are hearing you, people are witnessing your character and integrity. The Lord has need of thee, but sometimes we've got to clean ourselves up. Sometimes we've got to change our ways. I hear the Spirit say, make a change. What does the Lord really want me to do? What's next? What now? As one who has absorbed life's blows, endured the wounds of failure, We've also enjoyed our accomplishments and relished in our successes. We find that we still wonder. We converse with friends and we seek counsel. We pray and we search for that which really matters. We long to know about our significance. If this is you, I have good news. The human spirit will always cry out for more. 
God created us this way, and because of this, he calls out to us and draws us to himself. He is coming after us, for the Lord has need of thee. We're certainly not donkeys. We're not a colt. But I would like to submit that our relationship to this story may be this, that many of us remain tied up like that donkey, like that colt can never get into where you're supposed to go because you're being held back by chains of hatred, chains of dislike, chains of inferiority. Oh, there's so many things that hold us back from our promised purpose. Today, I would suggest that we do what the disciples did. Untie those things that are holding us back. One of the hardest things to come to terms with are the things that we've got to let go. But if the Lord has need of thee, there's some things we're gonna have to let go. Let me pose these questions to you. Are there ropes holding you back? Keeping you from knowing which direction to take? Are there ropes that keep you stuck? Have you accepted the lie that was whispered in your ear? Have you agreed with the argument that was presented to you? Have you agreed that life is over and there's not much more I can do? Do you hear the whisper that says, I'm too old, I'm too disconnected, I'm too this or that to be of use to the Lord? Do you wonder where to start? And when you know you need to start all over again, do those thoughts overwhelm you? Well, my friends, Jesus knows this. Beloved one, as, as the anointed one in your life, he comes to untie the ropes that are holding you back. To break every yoke and to declare to you that your life is not over. There's still much to be done. The Lord has need of thee. He's in the business of untying donkeys and breaking people free from that which holds them back. You were not created to stay tied up. If you feel ordinary and insignificant, I submit to you that he uses ordinary people. And let me say this, some feel ordinary and insignificant. But others people's problem is that they feel too big and important. That can hold you back as well. I submit to you that God uses ordinary people, strengthening them in the significance of a relationship with him all for the advancement of his kingdom. My friend, the master, is waiting on you. Your time to flourish has just begun. Don't you see that you have been untied from interruptions, work duties, deadlines, and obligations? Don't you see that you have been untied from the sin that holds you back? You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. God is a God of a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance. But you've got to become ordinary to God. In other words, it will not be by my strength. It will not be by my intellect. It will not be by how I can formulate plans. If the Lord don't build the building, They that labor, labor in vain. Are you tired? Did it take a little extra to get up this morning to come to 43rd and Wabash? If you're run down, amen. I say to you, keep on seeking the presence of God. Keep on praying and keep on waiting. For they that wait, 
upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Do I have any weary folk in the house today? Do I have people that don't know which way to go? I want you to know, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding for he giveth power how many need power today lift your hand if you need power today for he giveth power to the faint and to them with no might he increases strength even the youth shall be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord let me give you another one. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, anybody got any wicked that's coming after you? When the wicked, even my enemies and foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fail though war should rise against me in this will I be confident for one thing that I have desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever I want you to stand to your feet right now You don't have to bear that burden anymore. For he's a burden bearer. He's a heavy load sharer. You need to know when you walk out of here that God goes before you to make your way safe, easy, and successful, peaceful, prosperous, abundant, and productive. If you receive that today, you'll walk out of here in a new way. You don't have to bear that burden. It's time for you to develop that relationship with the burden bearer. There's not a bill that he can't pay. There's not a sickness that he cannot heal. There's not a situation that you're in that he can't pull you out of. If there's someone here in the room today, God has a wonderful future planned for you. But the devil don't want you to reach that point. Some of you, before you leave here today, somebody's going to bring you something to discourage you. But I'm praying that God will cover you so that if anybody comes up to you or some force comes by, uh, to you, that it will be repelled by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you're here today and you want a fellowship with a church that will love you, that will care for you, the Lord has need of thee. If you need to know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sin, which I suggest you do. The Lord has need of thee. If you just want to come and rededicate yourself, now is a good time to do that. If you're in the room today, won't you come down? If you're joining us virtually, won't you put something in the chat? Come on if you're here today. Come on, Lord, keep me. If you're here today, Jesus is waiting on you. The Lord has need of thee this morning. 
God bless you. You may be seated. on my way to heaven I won't be here long at this time in our service we do what we call consecration oh God has been good to us can you say amen to that God has blessed us beyond measure this is the opportunity that we have to give back to God a portion of which he has blessed us with. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. And all these things that you stand in the need of, God will send it to you. As you consecrate today, please lift up your gift unto the Lord. Repeat after me, I have because I give, I give because I have, and therefore I am never without. For my God shall supply all my need, in Jesus' name.
Come on, praise him for the victory. If you're looking for a victory, don't wait till the battle is over. You need to shout right now. Tell him thank you for what he's going to do. Tell him thank you for what he's already done. Oh, give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. And he shall reign for He's got all power in his hand. He can do it for you today. Yes, he can. Say it one more time with me. And he, and he shall reign for Now wave them palms in the air. If you still got them, wave them in the air. Come on, that's one thing we can do together. And he shall reign for. Happy Palm Sunday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah.
The Spirit of the Lord is here. Let the church say yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Lord has need of thee. Can you just say yes to the Lord today? Let me hear you say yes, Lord. I'll do what you want me to do. Yes, Lord. I'll be who you want me to be. Yes, Lord. Not my will, but thy will be done, O oh God. Yes. Yes. I want to make a correction. Trustee Janice Brown's memorial service will be this coming Saturday, March 30th, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. The location is the International Christian Fellowship, 260 Sunshine Drive, Bolingbrook, Illinois, 60490. That's this Saturday coming, International Christian Fellowship, 260 Sunshine Drive, Bolingbrook, Illinois, 60490. We thank God for the spirit of Trustee Janice Brown, served our church for a long time, and we're grateful for her. All right. Tian, you can cut, cut us off and take us off the air for, for me, please. We thank you for joining First Church of Deliverance today. We've made it easy to stay connected to us. You can email us at office at fcdchicago.org or call the church office at area code 773-373-7700. Be sure to connect with us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Visit fcdchicago.org for a list of services and resources. God bless you, and remember, you can always begin again.